Shima Lane, and this week's Sketch to Scrapbook page is brought to you by JBS Mercantile because I've been working with the May kits and I've created quite a few uh, pages already so I thought I'd just show you um, what I've made so far and then with this week's sketch I'm going to try and make a layout from just my leftovers and get to right to the end of the kit. So um, here's what I started. This is um, almost entirely just the main kit. The only thing that's not from the main kit are those two little letters right there. And here most things are from the main kit but I did add um, letters and labels uh, and these little buttons from the dime store kit. And this one is mostly the main kit with a tiny little bit of the mini book kit thrown in. So these screen printed uh, words are something that we did in the mini kit and um, this title block here has lots of things from the mini kit but this uh, cardstock and the butterfly pattern paper that's from the main kit. The, the mini book kit is still um, the mini book kit is sold out but the main kit is still available possibly the dime store kit I'm not quite sure as this goes um, live. And this one is mostly the dime store kit, but with a little bit of the other two thrown in. So there's a, a few stickers from the mini book kit and some papers from the main kit. They work really well together. And this one is just partially finished. This is something I will show you as next week's starting point. So that's just a little bit of a, a look ahead to where I'm going next week. And then that brings us to what I have left. Now, I'm going to try and focus on just what I have left from the main kit. So that would be this. I have one sheet of wood grain embossed cardstock. Most of a sheet of a transparency. If you look, it's 12 by 12, but that includes the branding at the bottom. So really, it's just shy of a 12 by 12 because I've cut that one strip of stars off the top. So it's nearly there but not quite. I have one full sheet of pattern paper left so it just didn't quite go with the rest of the layouts that I was making and that's this fancy pants uh, design that has multicolored polka dots on one side and a pale orange linen on the other. Then I get into scraps so I have this much of the yellow stripe or the green um, kind of uh, spirograph type design. This much of the strawberry which has wood grain on the back. I have one more vellum vintage paper. It's, like, uh, it's a butter wrap. It's a really lovely vellum. And then I have some embellishments. I still have this crocheted flower. I have some pieces from this. I'm trying to think if this is the right pack or not because I did use one of these. Um, so I'm not sure if this originally had how many pieces were in here. Okay, so I've mixed up two packs, forgive me, um, because I had two packs of the same thing. I didn't know what was in the kit and then I bought it for myself. Ah! Um, so I've already used a couple of these on the other layouts, but I have them here. So those are wood um, pennants and tickets from Prima. And this, which is the exclusive stamp that comes in the kit. And it looks like that. Now, I'm going to try to stick just to this, but I have something on deck as a bit of an emergency. And that's these. And this pack of the vintage sew-on buttons came in the dime store kit. And the dime, these vintage buttons are one of my favorite Jenny products ever. So I'm going to just put them to the side of my desk for the moment. I'm going to see if I'm going to need them or not. But um, if I can stick with just the main kit, that'd be excellent. But I may need a little bit more. We'll see how I go. Okay, so I have a sketch. The sketch looks like this, which means it looks really messy but I, bear with me, I, ha I have a master plan. I want to use this transparency and I want to use this cardstock. I think they ended up at the end of the kit because I really liked them, but I wasn't quite sure what to do with them. And so I came up with a sketch that would let them work. And what I'm going to do is make a two-sided page. It's going to be half transparency and half cardstock. So basically, I'm going to keep the transparency as it is, and I'm going to cut this cardstock in half and put it on both sides, here and here which means I'm going to do what I pretty much never do, and that's scrub up on both sides of the paper. But with a transparency, basically that's your only option if you want it to remain transparent in the album, is that you need to be able to, to do something with the other side. So that's my plan. I'm going to um, make a two-sided page, and the photo is going to be here. There's going to be a row of accents here, which I'm thinking will be this stamp um, repeated across the page. 
title will be on the solid piece because everything here is solid so you can't see through that so I can add more and more here anything that gets added on the transparency I'm going to have to duplicate on the back so for the moment that's just the photo and the photo mat and and then I'll put some embellishment here but it'll have to stay on the photo mat because anything that goes off is going to have to be duplicated on the other side and then more embellishment diagonally on and the, on the cardstock element of the page. So that's my master plan. I'm going to grab some photos and you're welcome to scrap along with me and see if this sketch works for you and any transparencies you've been stashing. Okay, here's what I mean by um, using the transparency and then half a sheet of cardstock to make the 12 by 12 page. So this side is already attached but if I were to just leave it like that I'd have um, this part showing if I wanted to see the transparency or I'd end up with another page here which would mean the transparency would just show the back of the other layout so that's not going to work and um, so to keep that transparency clear I'm going to do both sides of the page at the same time essentially. So I'll turn this over and I can add this bit here. Now, I know that some of you are going to scream that I'm wasting this part of the transparency. It's true. But what I'm worried about is if I cut this too short, the page isn't going to be stable because there'll be nothing that's the full length. And so to go ahead and, and include the stability, I'm going to put the whole thing there. You might have a better idea with how to get more from that. Um, but I'm worried about it being too flimsy if I don't. So that's my plan so forgive me if you think that that's wasteful I'm really not trying to waste it I promise okay so now I have this two-sided page and following the sketch I've cut two photo mats and so that means that if I use this as the um, following the sketch on the first side then when I come back to the other side I'm just gonna put it in exactly the same place so the sketch will be mirrored on the back. Now what I've done to choose photos so that I know these two are always going to go together in my album is to choose two photos um, from the same trip, the same day, but two different stories. And they are both just single photos. So one of these two guys, which um, if you can't tell from there, this guy is completely head to toe covered in eggs because he was um, raising money for charity by letting himself get pummeled with eggs, as you do. And then this one, which is a picture of a cinema, which is a funny little story to go along with it, on this side. And then I'll carry on from there. I hope that makes sense. Okay, so I'm going to do one side. And I know that I want to add this here, like in the sketch, but I need to add that border. And for that, I'm going to use the stamp and um, some brown ink and I think for this side I'm going to use the yellow and then I'll cut out a few of these to create that little border. I realized in the scraps that I could stamp it on a few different colors of paper and have that little bit of color through the middle of the layout. So I decided to go with that option. So I'm just going to start adhering these and I want to leave just a tiny little border at the top and I want the pieces to go off the edge. So it's as if it were part of a continual, um, continual border. And then I'll just use the photo mat to see where it's going to cover so that I don't have to waste much. Let's see if that's going to work with the extra. That should be just about right. So just fill these in. And then this little space at the end should be the right size for this little extra piece to fit there. So just turn this over, cut off the extra. And pop that in that empty gap there. I want to add another layer here and I have one paper that still has the 12 inch width and I have both polka dots and the orange available there and I'm just going to use a border punch. Let's see what I have handy. I haven't used this one in a while. Okay, this is the large scallop. A lot of people ask when I use this one where can I get the one that's just a big scallop because I can only find the one with the dots. This is the one with the dots. And um, it's just that I don't push very hard so I don't get the dots on the um, finished design. So that's 
easy enough. If you're looking and you find the one with the dots, you've got the right one. So I'm just going to stick that in place, then add the photo mat and the photo, and I'll be ready to start with the embellishment. So here's a photo in place, and then I, I neglected to show you the lettering at the beginning of the uh, beginning of this. Um, this came with a wooden uh, alphabet in the kit from Pink Paisley, and I've already used it on several titles. So I um, I have no E's, I have no N's, um, yeah. And uh, Glitter Girl was asked some similar questions about that this week. Um, so here's another idea with that. In the end, I didn't have any I's, I didn't have um, any N's, but I managed to get this word, which seemed to be the only egg pun I could spell. Um, so I'm thinking I'll add uh, sub, uh, some smaller lettering up here to lead into this. But this is truly Z, and the I is a J that I cut the tail off of. Um, and I don't have anything round to make the dot in the wooden, so I might um, cheat and add a little dot of something else, or I might just leave it plain. It's certainly legible. So um, these are really lightweight, so you can just use normal adhesive. And I'm going to um, have the tops touch that border, except for the eye, which is shorter. And that should keep them in a nice little line. I went ahead and added my journaling at this point so that I'll still have room to put in the embellishment. And what I've done is taken that pack of the Primas and looked at the words and divided them into two different sets. So each one will have one pennant and two tickets. And the wording works better for each side. So these two, these three pieces will go with the other photo and these three here. So what I'm thinking is that because there's length here in the in the size of the writing, that that can be mimicked with this shape here. And then I'll take this one and add it up a little bit higher so that it's linking the embellishment and the writing to the photo so everything's touching. Then I want to go up across the diagonal and add this piece up here, which does mean that when I get to the other side, I'm going to have to put that ticket on the other side in the same place but they do line up quite well back to back, so that should be just fine, and I'll just be stuck with that placement of the embellishment on the other side. Um, but that's where everything's going to go. And that will have me pretty much done on this side, and so I can start going ahead and adding things to the other side um, to make sure everything works. Things just a little bit different. I decided I would add that piece of vellum right underneath the photo, and I've gone ahead and matched up the photo mat and the embellishment. Um, and I, I like how this vellum looks from the other side too, so I don't mind that coming up over the cardstock piece. I wanted to add, I'm not going to do the stamped border this time, I'm just going to do the punch. Um, but this is the only length I have of the green uh, left, so I'm just going to see if I can stretch it enough to go all the way across. Yep, okay, so then I can just tuck this under. I like the idea of it going right underneath that vellum because you'll still be able to see it. A few little scraps. So I thought I might, I just cut them into nice tidier boxes because they were all kind of off cut, um, odd shapes. And I thought I would layer them up and add them over to the side. And then I could add in the pennant and the extra ticket here somewhere. I could add um, the title on top of the box and then the journaling either here or here or both. And so that's kind of what I'm thinking. It's a similar idea to the other side, but because this side I don't have to mirror exactly what's on the back, I can have a little bit more freedom in just using the pieces that are left over. Here's my finished version of this side, and I just kept it really simple. The title and the embellishment here, a bit more writing in the corner, and then added some mist in both those areas so um, that it would balance the planar top of the page since I can't add any more embellishment up here. So that's where I've gone with this somewhat messy sketch, which I'll tidy up for you on the blog. And from that, using the transparency, became two pages, one either side. And you could, you can use a transparency and do that same idea of two, uh, two sides to the layout, or you can stick with solid papers that you can't see through, and then you'd be able to do one side of the page and have a bit more freedom of what you wanted to add at the top. I'd love to see what you do with this sketch, and I look forward to seeing what you share. Thanks so much for watching.